right. Here we have, this is the last section in chapter 7, and it deals with solving systems of linear inequalities. So, if uh, we recall a little review, what we must do with just the regular inequality, we have to first get the y by itself. It's almost like we're putting in y equals mx plus b, but we just have an inequality attached to it. So I'm going to subtract 2x to both sides, which then this leaves me with y is less than negative 2x plus 4. So same same rules apply. My y-intercept is at positive 4, and my slope is at negative 2. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, and to the right 1. Or I can go up 2 and to the left 1. Either way, I'm going to get the same line. And we have to remember that if it's greater than or less than, it's a dashed line. If it's a greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, then it's a solid line. In this case, for this example, it's a dashed line. Um, next thing we have to do is remember we have to give a test point. And the test point I like to use is 0, 0. As long as the boundary line isn't at 0, 0, I can use it. So that means that my y then it's going to equal 0, and then my x is going to equal 0, so negative 2 times 0 is 0, so that leaves me with 4. And 0 is less than 4 happens to be a true statement. So since that 0, comma 0, the test point, was a true statement, that means I can shade on the side that I use the test point on. So shading will occur on this side. Now, dealing with uh, systems of inequalities, there are some steps that we have to keep in mind. So, like, say I have example A, where I have y is greater than negative x minus 2, and y is less than or equal to 3x plus 4. So here are the steps. First, we graph each inequality. The same rules apply from less than 6.7. Second is we shade um, each inequality. Um, in this case, sometimes it's nice to have uh, different color pencils to determine which graph goes to which shading so we can determine um, where the shading overlaps and where these, this shading overlaps is considered our shaded region. So let me show you the example here. What I just said, y is greater than negative x minus 2, and I have y is less than or equal to 3x plus 4. We are already in slope-intercept form, so the first one is I got uh, my y-intercept is at negative 2, and my slope is, is negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 to the right 1. Or I could go up 1 to the left 1. Either way, it's going to be the same. Since it's a greater than, that means it's a dotted line. So OK. And the shaded region. If I use 0, 0 as my test point, I got 0 is greater than negative 2 happens to be a true statement, so that means I can shade the true statement, which is a portion of the test point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my color. I'm going to put red up, and I'm going to look for, to make, oh, excuse me, to uh, draw the new line, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where my y-intercept is at, and then my slope is going to be up 3 over 1, so 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And since it's a less than or equal to, it is a solid line. Oh, shoot. Got away 
away from me there. Now I need to find the test. Now I need to find the shaded region for this one. So if I go to, I can use the test point at zero comma zero. So I got zero. It's greater than or equal to what four. This happens to be a true statement. So, I, in in other situations, you would shade it looking like this. But because I am wanting to just only shade the portion that is overlapping the black and the red, this portion here will be shaded only. So the only portion that I'm concerned about, which is the shaded region of this of these two systems of inequality, is what is shaded in red. Because not only does it hold true for the top equation, but it holds true for the bottom equation because it overlaps. All right, I got two more systems. I have x is greater than negative 5, and I have y is greater than or equal to 4. So when dealing with, say, x is greater than negative 5, um, I realize that it is going to be a vertical line, and it touches at where x is at negative 5 and because it is a greater than sign it is going to be a dashed line and next I need to figure out where the shading is at. I can still use the test excuse me the test point of 0 comma 0 so 0 is greater than negative 5. This happens to be a true statement. So my shading can occur on the right-hand side of my boundary line. I'm going to use a different color. And for y is greater than or equal to 4. And this will be a horizontal line that touches at 1, 2, 3, at 4. And because it's a greater than or equal to, it becomes a, it's a solid line. And now I need to determine where the shading's at. I can still use a test point of 0, 0. So it would be like 0 is greater than or equal to 4. That happens to be not, not a true statement. So that means that the shading's going to occur above my boundary line of y is greater than or equal to 4. And since I want to shade only the portion that would also overlap my red shading, so the shading would occur in this portion here, stuff that's shaded just in black. The reason why it is is because it overlaps the red as well. and this would make it a true statement for both inequalities. Um, sometimes in the in your homework, you will also be given a third inequality, but still the same rules still apply. You're still going to graph each equation. Uh, individually, you, you're going to shade them, and then you're going to determine where all three uh, shades overlapped, and that is going to be you can, you're considered your uh, finished shaded region. So, I got y is greater than or equal to negative one. This is going to be a horizontal line where it crosses at where the y is at negative one. It is a solid line because it's greater than or equal to. And I can use the test point at 0, comma 0. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. That happens to be a true statement. So my shading 
will occur where the test point um, was above the boundary line. So I'm going to change my color of my pen. And I'm going to go x is greater than negative 2. So that becomes, that's going to be a vertical line at x equals negative 2. I know that this is a dotted dashed line because it does not have an equal to attached to it. All right, now I got to do some shading. I can still use the test point of 0, comma 0. So I can see that 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2. That is hold true. All I'm going to do is I'm going to shade just the portion that overlaps the black. So if it was just these two equations, my finished shaded region would be which, where the two colors overlap. Okay. Um, my last inequality is not in y equals mx plus b form, so I need to get that. So I got 2y. I'm going to subtract x to both sides. So it gives me less than or equal to negative x plus 4. If I divide everything by 2, so I have y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half plus 2. So let's see if I can... Let's see if this highlighter one works. So that means that I'm going to have at 1, 2. Oh, that doesn't work at all. Let me... I'll use... I guess I'll just use black again. I don't have any other color. I need a bit more pe better color pencils. So it's going to be at 1, 2. So it's going to be 2 here. And my slope is going to be negative 1 half. So it's going to go down 1 to the right 2. This is a solid line. So look something like this. Look something like that. And my test point, I'm going to use it 0, comma 0, so I go 0 is greater than or equal to 2. And yes, that's a true statement. So here's where it overlaps. And I'm going to try to really shade this in good. This is be considered the final uh, shaded region because it overlaps all three shaded inequalities. It shades where y is less than, or no, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to negative 1. It's shaded here where x is greater than negative 2, and it also shades in to our x plus 2y is less than or equal to 4. And that's sorry about that. And this concludes the lesson on um, solving systems of inequalities. Hope this helps. Until next time.